everybody. I am here with another episode of Chamber Chat, and I've got another guest in the car. I'm going to let him introduce himself, and we will kick it off from there. Hi, I'm Matt Slaughter. I'm the owner and president of Earthfort. Uh, we're located on Western Boulevard, and we're, um, I've been, uh, I started Earthfort in 2005. Yep. It's a soil microbiology testing laboratory, and agricultural supplies, I've invented some products, and really our focus is on uh, helping farmers bring their soil back to life. So put it in uh, put it in regular form, obviously that's super scientific stuff, I mean what do you, <laughs> on a day-to-day -day, what do you, what do you do, day-to-day, -day? what's what's it like working there? I mean day-to-day -day is samples come in and they go into the lab and the technicians process them and I work on, you know, answering questions, doing consultations, emails, just in, you know, helping people understand what we do in not scientific terms. <laughs> right, right, right. You know, practical advice. So if I if I'm a, well, I guess primarily or maybe exclusively, you're they're all farmers. You get a hold of you or uh, anybody who's working with soil, who's interested in the living part of it. So soil is alive with microbes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, and that's what we do. That's our specialty is we look at that part of the soil. It can help people make different types of decisions. So even if you're a backyard gardener and you just, okay. you don't want to use um, Roundup anymore, for example, not to be. Which I've heard is bad. Uh, apparently. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, and it, it depends on who you ask. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah, sure. If you, you ask know, them, right? But, uh, yeah, and so if you don't want to use chemicals, there are other ways to grow your plants. So we work with everybody from homeowners to large farmers, a lot of uh, a lot of compost operators. So we help oh, people yeah. with making compost and understanding the value of that material and how to use it. Now, different. In my in my limited soil knowledge capacity, mm -hmm. is there not, if I have a certain type of soil, let's say, um, and I bring it in and, and you're like and you identify it and that, but I want to do something different. I mean, me as just an individual, I'd be like, well, I can't I can't grow this here or I can't do this here with my soil. Is that something that you either like confirm or do you just kind of hey you can change it and and make it do this instead? I mean, how we do both. Okay, so. When we test the soil, we look at it and say, this soil is suitable for growing these types of plants. Or we uh -huh. say, if you want to grow some other type of plant and it's not suitable, we can give you ideas on how to change the soil so okay. that you can grow what you want to grow. You know, and, and we do that a lot. And what usually ends up happening is that humans have a tendency to mess things up. <laughs> We're pretty good at that. Yeah, yeah. So Nailed what? It. So what ends up happening is that you know you work your soil for so many years in a particular way, and it stops working the way you want it to. Because it, because you said it's living. So I guess assuming yeah. it like wears out, is that? It, wear, it wears out, or the biology the, it shifts okay. based on practices or chemicals or different things that you might add. Okay. So then we can, but we can help you understand what's going on give you ideas on how to bring it back to where you want it because I mean a lot of our customers can't afford to go from growing their corn to growing broccoli right right that just wouldn't make sense for a commercial right farmer. right so we have to help them figure out how to get the soil back to where it needs to be to grow their corn Super, so. that's super interesting. So if I again, if I if I am so I, I actually thought that you only did commercial stuff. I didn't realize that you did uh, you did residential. Oh yeah. Um, is that how's that work out in terms of the business? Is it half and half, or is it kind of? It's you know, from sheer dollars, uh, obviously commercial farmers. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I'd say it's it's probably a third of our business is small scale. Really. You know, and, and when I say that, I mean landscapers, yeah. homeowners, golf courses, oh, um, yeah, okay. smaller smaller operations, right? So like a vineyard is a commercial operation, but most of them are only five acres. Okay. They're small. That's right? considered small, five yeah. acres? Yeah. Okay. You know, but 
even somebody who's or communities the community gardens yeah. we work with a lot of community gardens helping them understand what's going on so if I did so if I dig a um, I mean what what is a, what am I digging like a clump of soil I mean <laughs> <laughs> you can tell I have no idea how, how sure. this works this is yeah. great no so um, you go on into the yard and you say okay my grass isn't doing well a couple of I, I recommend you use the apple core don't let your wife know right? no go grab the apple core <laughs> and get a couple of plugs from okay. around the grass mix them together and then bring that in or send it to us oh that's it yeah that's small yeah we only need um, for a basic test we only need about half a cup of soil to do the test and then we can analyze it and then we we'll get in touch with you send you a report and say well here's what's going on and uh, like I said at the beginning, we make products too to help yeah. correct the problems. And I've been doing it for so long that you know oh, yeah. you don't have to test. I know what's wrong with your lawn just by looking at just it. Just by looking at it. Yeah. You know, or just you can describe it to me, and I'll know what's going on. Sure. Sure. You know, and so our products can be used. You don't have to test in order to use the products. And a lot of our testing customers don't use our products. So it, huh. it doesn't matter, you know, there's there's a lot of different ways. So it's fortuitous that we're, we're doing it. So I'm actually, we just talked about, um, we, we just bought a house and in the back corner there's this like little three sort of vegetable plots. Yep. And we were, we were sort of having a discussion or a semi argument, which I knew I was gonna lose, obviously, um, <laughs> about what to grow. Mm -hmm. But if actually, if I plug that in, bring it in, send it into you, you could probably just tell me what's gonna perform best, right? Yeah, yeah. That'll be that's an easy one to do. So I should do that before we publish this so that I look like a genius <laughs> when I do it. Is there is it is it is I say all soil created equal? I mean if you take Corvallis, for example, yeah. is it mostly the same stuff? No. Is it, no. It, every every soil uh, when you look at um, so there's two ways to look at soil. One way is to look at the chemistry, physical components of the soil, the, okay. the, how much sand it has, how much clay. Okay. So that's going to be varied a lot. Sure. But a little bit more consistent within the valley, right? We okay. have heavy clay soils. Yeah, yeah. You know, but when it comes to biology, it's going to be, there, there's no way to predict whether or not your neighbor is going to have the same kind of soil that you are when it comes to the biology. Huh. Because everybody takes care of that little piece of land, it becomes a small ecosystem. Oh, yeah. And, you know, you may have the same exact soil texture, you know, that, that heavy clay, but if they had chem lawn for 20 years and you didn't do anything, or you don't know what you did, the biology, the life of the soil is going to be different. Now, is there a way to fake it? So if I'm like, if I see my neighbor who's just got perfectly green, lush looking grass, is he pretty much nailing it and I'm the screw up in the block? So or is that a good sign? The, um, this time of year, it should be brown. Oh, it should be? Yeah, it should be dormant. Score. Because, because <laughs> the only way, it, and it's, you know, it's the nature of our ecosystem. Grasses go dormant in the summer because of lack of water. Right. And in the spring, they'll come back. Okay. Right? And anybody who's not watered their lawn for a whole summer knows that they come back in the fall yeah, yeah. when it cools down and the rain comes. The grass that's green and perfect is probably actually using too much water and they're using too many chemicals to keep it that way. If there's no weeds, there's no, um, you know, and it looks perfect. Yeah. Chances are they're the ones that are causing problems <laughs> for the environment because there's a lot of there's a lot of things that happen. Sure. Um, you know when you do that, the runoff from yeah. the lawn and the, the lack of services that that soil can provide. Now I'm I'm jumping to a conclusion here. Yes. But so are you? Uh, maybe anti is too strong a word, but are you anti chemicals for that sort of stuff, or is it natural is best kind of deal? Or well, you know, I'm I'm pretty pragmatic. Okay. When it comes to a lot of these things, it's like, look, everybody has their own needs. Yeah, sure. Um, 
you know, the parks, they water the parks to keep them nice and usable through the summer. Right. But they don't put fertilizer on it. Okay. Mostly. <laughs> I don't think. I think the city of Corvallis can't afford to fertilize yeah. the parks. It's but just... they can afford to run the irrigation. Right. Um, I, you know, it, it really depends. You know, you can look at just driving by OSU at the practice field mm -hmm. and it looks pretty nice. Yeah. What I don't know is if it's fake or not. Okay. Right? If it's AstroTurf or whatever. Yeah, they yeah, call sure. It, sports turf. Yep. Um, you know, but if it's grass, then, you know, they're spending a lot of money to keep it that way during the summer. Okay. So I, I'm a conservation of water is probably more important than the chemicals. But some of those chemicals are hard on the wildlife. And like you said, if it's brown, that's yeah. probably not a bad thing, this right? Is, this is what it should look like this yeah. time of year in this climate. Uh, huh. How did, how did you how'd you get into this? Oh, that... <laughs> so, I got, a, I got a degree from LBCC. Okay. From the community college for computers. Computer <laughs> Relational Database Programming. Okay. And so, I, nothing related. Exactly, all. exactly. And uh, I took a job with the lab as a database guy. Okay. So I started working with their database and the way they were doing it was um, really horrible. Like, this was 2003 and they were, you know, they hadn't heard of the internet yet. Okay. At that point. All right, <laughs> it's like, all right. It was so, even at that point it was incredibly archaic even though sure. it was only a few years old. But the I changed the whole culture of how they use the computers and the professor that ran the lab, she was very impressed. And so I and I expressed an interest in helping her grow the business. Okay. So she said, Well maybe perhaps you could someday become the replacement, right? Okay. Which is kinda early, but you know, she was She had a hunch. You know, she had a hunch maybe or I had a hunch, I don't know. <laughs> so I switched over and started learning about soil. At that point, she taught me. But were you like, this has nothing to do with what I, my degree or, it, yeah. was, it was just the computer relational stuff was yeah. what you? Yeah, I was huh. a computer guy. And, uh, but the thing is, is um, my wife had a degree in agriculture. Oh, okay. And a minor in international agricultural development. Now we're getting into it. But she couldn't find a job. Okay. I got this job working on computers, and it turned into an international agricultural development <laughs> job because the way I was trained was she, the, um, the good doctor sent me to all the places in the world she didn't want to go. Nice. So I got to go to coffee plantation in Nicaragua and sugarcane in, uh, or sugar cane in Nicaragua, coffee in Guatemala, tomatoes in Mexico, I went to Suriname, I went to Ukraine, um, all these places, you know, kind of developing countries, yeah, Haiti, yeah. Um, you know, places that were a little rough, right? Right. So she didn't want to go because she wasn't guaranteed an AC or something like that. Who knows, right? <laughs> it's just not a comfortable place for her. Right. So, so I learned trial under fire and she just sent me off started learning. Well, that's cool. Yeah. So So you had no intention of getting into it, but here you are really. a whole bunch of years later. Yeah, now you're now, doing good. Yeah. That's yeah. cool. That's very cool. Well, so <laughs> part of part of the thing behind, you know, when we talk about companies like Earth or any company really, yeah. we, you know, obviously the name means something. Obviously the building, the logo, the stuff, the, all, yeah. all that good stuff means yeah. something. But you know, part of this part of this chamber chat series is to get to know more about people behind the business yes. right yeah so um yeah we want you know we want to talk about about you if that's about cool me. <laughs> you know that's yes. good not everybody's comfortable doing it but it's, yeah. it's a bit of fun so, so. <laughs> i have this uh, i have this little system i it's it is not a system it's random it's totally in my head but i'm gonna, mm -hmm. I'm gonna shoot some questions to you okay and then uh a little rapid fire okay. and then uh you answer as quick as you can and some of your answers you may be asked to justify okay if they're a bit sketch Sound good? Oh, we're gonna die. Yep. Okay. All right. All right. Now. <laughs> All right. Cool. Um. Well, actually, this first one is should be should be a tough one with the number of places you've uh, visited. Best place you've ever visited? Corvallis, Oregon. 
No, you it's can't serious. say that. No, I'm serious. That no. is a brown nose. Okay. Come on, man. Southern Spain. Okay. Uh, my wife went to Cartagena as a grad student and or part of her yeah, part of her graduate degree. And I got to go visit. That was my first gig um, as the soil guy was we went to I went to Lyon to give a talk. Yeah. And then I spent two weeks in southern Spain with Melissa in Toledo and Granada and Cartagena, that whole southern Spanish region was just amazing. Now, was it more because it was your first one, or you're like, nope, that's no, that's definitely no, no. the best? It was the culture and uh, that that mix of European and Moorish culture, okay. um, Middle East, and, and, the, and the food and the everything. Okay. So, yeah, cool. I even bought a sword there. I bought a seventh generation <laughs> saber, uh, seventh generation sword maker. Really? Made sword Toledo steel. It's like famous if you're into swordsmanship and history and stuff. So I actually got a sword from. Probably not there. a carry-on item. It was a carry-on item, and the customs guy. We what? had a blast. How is that a carry-on item? They had it wrapped up in bubble wrap and sealed and. Oh marked, yeah. Because right? you couldn't just rip the bubble wrap. No, off. you couldn't get it out uh, that's fast enough. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. Yeah. Um. Uh, favorite food. Oh, that's a tough one. We asked, um, we asked the tough hitting question. Yes, on that's, a, that's a tough one. You know, probably anything barbecue. Um, oh, you gotta narrow it down more. You got one dish. Brisket. Oh yeah? Yeah. Smoked? Smoked. Yeah, do you Smoked do it yourself? Brisket. No, I don't, but that's part of my travels to go to Texas. And I love like Kansas City, Texas. Oh yeah. You know, and Houston is different than Dallas and all this stuff, and so I get to try all these different if, if I was to say you could you could eat brisket at one place, where would it be? I have no idea. One state. It, it'd probably be Texas. Yeah? They yeah, do the best? I think so. So far. So far. Alright, alright. Well, well, it was one time in Chicago, but... <laughs> Worst thing you've ever eaten? Um, or would never eat again? Wow, that, that's also tough because I have a rule that I'll try anything twice. Um, <laughs> okay, what well, wouldn't you try a third time? I, you know, I'm a real, I really hate lima beans. Oh and yeah? I always have, I always hated lima beans. So Why? I, I, they're just, the texture and the taste is just disgusting. It makes me gag. Yeah? Other yeah. beans though? Other beans, most other beans are okay. I'm not a big fan, but they're okay. They're okay. okay. And, then, and then the other one is McDonald's. I will never, ever in my life again eat a McDonald's. Was it was it one event? <laughs> it was an event. Oh really? For sure. Oh yeah. come on. Yeah. Give us some detail. I, so one day at work they brought in a couple of Big Macs. Yep. And I ate it and I actually went into anaphylactic shock. Was, I'm allergic to crab. So when you eat crab, the whole system shuts down yeah, yeah. and everything. I eat these these the, um, these Big Macs and the same thing happened to me. I was sick for two days. And after that, even the smell of it is like enough to kind of. Uh, yep. So that huh. was. That Did they was find like, out what it was? No, no. That's probably a good reason not to eat them, though. Yeah. You know, <laughs> well, ten, that, it's I'd... been ten years now since I've ever it's... even stepped into a McDonald's. Like, uh, are we talking all fast food burgers, or is no? Nope. It, just, just McDonald's. Just them? All right, can, all right, uh, all right. I, I love Burger Bill. Um, <laughs> plug for Burgerville. Yeah, um, sorry. <laughs> no, no, it's good. Yeah. Um, the uh, favorite music? Uh, there's another tough one because I'm a musician. Oh, you are? Yeah, and I do jazz and rock and. What? Blues, what do you use? Guitar? Bass, bass. Okay, yeah. Yeah, mostly bass. Okay. A uh, little bit guitar. I'm also. Uh, well, I mean, with a name like Matt Slaughter. Right. You yeah, gotta be a rock. You gotta. Right? right? That's right. And then I'm also a classically trained wannabe, classically <laughs> trained. Uh, Opera singer. Nah. -uh. So I'm working. I've been working on that. COVID really put a damper on that process. But now that things are lightening up, we'll probably get back into it. See, this is why we do chamber chat. This is cool. <laughs> you're, you're. When well, you say classically trained, I mean, how far along are we talking? We're, uh, you're obviously got to be pretty decent at it. Uh, no, not really. I mean, it's been a few years, but I have, I have a lot of. You're not gonna bust one out. No, huh? no. I'm not. No. 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 <laughs> you're like, no, don't no, ask. It's too I have had two people sing in yeah. the car. Yeah, okay. one was really good, the other was Josh, and that was last week. <laughs> you know, sorry, Josh. Um, <laughs> but it was, uh, it was, how'd you, that's, 
So if you had to pick a style of music.